Welcome to this edition of Inside the Academy Studio. Today's conversation will be about David Fincher's The Social Network. The Social Network is a film that revolves around Mark Zuckerberg and his creation, loosely, loosely based, creation of the popular social media website Facebook and the, the trials and tribulation and the backstabbing uh, that is the backstory of this film. Social media and Facebook are, are things we're particularly familiar with uh, in these past years, and we now have a, a movie to represent them. So, how do we feel? Uh, I guess I think a good point to start off is with the central character, Mark Zuckerberg. Zuckerberg, somebody we don't really know, doesn't have a huge uh, personal profile, uh, in the media, but is now portrayed by Jesse Eisenberger. Uh, what did you think of the portrayal? I guess. I'm sorry, you lost my interest. <laughs> it's quite funny. Yeah. Um, he was very, I would say, I don't want to say, that. some people are saying, he's a villain of the year. Well, second, after lots of, uh, hug, lots of hugging bear. Well, yeah, mm -hmm. people are saying it's a very textured performance, but I'm thinking it's a very, he's a, He's a douchebag. No, it's it's almost it, they created a Mark Zuckerberg that's has very like almost somebody who's very particular, distant, socially awkward. I don't know if these things are true. I don't know if Mark Zuckerberg has Asperger's or autistic. There's really elements of his performance that are like that. Uh, so it's a difficult performance, I think. Eisenberg really plays within his kind of field. It, it doesn't really escape it. I, I guess it's, it's, very much, it's a subtle performance. He does a good job of being subtle. You know, it's a lot of Zuckerberg is not on what he says. It's how he reacts to what is said and how other people are so sharp and, you know, almost witty, but he's kind of nonchalant or really focused on what he wants to do. Uh, yeah, like, any, I think, I think a lot of this, why he did came, come off as very, very, as a huge D-bag, yes. is also, I like the line at the end of the movie, where he, where the lawyer, I forgot her name, but she's played by Rashida, Rashida Jones, Rashida Jones yeah, right. does mention that, this is, this kind of implies that this story is kind of slanted against Zuckerberg, because this is told from the the plaintiff's point of view, right? Right, right. So that's why it's a. This is kind of like a. This is a character. This is a character in assassination of Zuckerberg. I, 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 I think so. many people will feel sympathy for Zuckerberg after watching this movie. Right, and I, yeah. I think that's partially why I don't feel it can ever be considered to be the the movie that captures like the social media or how Facebook was created, just because it was really a representation of the Winklevoss trends and uh, Divya Narendra's case and Eduardo Saverin. Um, speaking of Saverin, played by Andrew Garfield, um, I guess because it is his, basically his slanted movie, is he maybe the only morally correct character? Everybody else seems morally ambiguous or really un immoral. Is mm -hmm. Saverin the only moral character in the movie? The way it's portrayed, yeah, because it seems like the the Winklevoss twins, they have a very, they're very selfish in their cause, right? I mean, most, most uh, copyright property, most copyright uh, lawyers familiar with the subject would say that they didn't really have a proper case because when it comes to this making a website, it's about the actual coding, not just a, a loose semblance of an idea, right? So right. Like, it seems like they were just, they were strictly after the money and I think the movie kind of portrayed that. Well, it seems like Saverin was kind of, it was true, he was kind of trying to salvage his share and what he put into this company, which was, which wasn't significant at the beginning, but one, starting out was huge for, right. huge for a startup, and, and his friendship too. Yeah, and I think yeah. Saverin is safe because he's not, he's not portrayed as that typical uh, uh, blue blood elite Harvard type where, you know, the Winklevoss chins are are elite rowers and are really portrayed as, you know, people who are almost abusing the system where, you know, they kind of loosely try to get this nerdy guy, Zuckerberg, to help them. 
Yeah. And when he finally does it himself and creates something more tangible, they feel like they've been used. So, in that fact, I think Severin is, you know, he's he's portrayed as, a, as almost a normal guy, really, you know. Yeah. It's In the movie, it seems to be very difficult to have a relationship, a friendship with Zuckerberg. Um, but he kind of almost pulls it off. Uh, how did you feel... Uh, I guess we'll get to Aaron Sorkin and his script, but how about, I guess it's it's based on the book, so I think it would resemble the book, but the, the narrative style, it's very, very simple. It's this simple courtroom, or deposition. boardroom, deposition, yeah. flashback. Is yeah. it an effective way to uh, tell the story, or do you find it was something more could have been done? I liked it. It was a bit different, because... It's it kind of... I think uh, Fincher and Sorkin did this to defeat the typical convention, right? You, when, you watch a ba- when you watch a typical like biopic kind of movie, you know it's going to be a startup, or they're going to get successful, success gets their head, and then the problem. Like, this one, they mix it in. Like, a, the problem and the and the highs are all... Are you seeing it at the same time? Like, it's kind of... Kind of it's also very much a typical biopic. Remember yeah. all these... All these little subtle clues of how his daily life influenced the like button or the relationship status. Yeah. It was still formulaic, but it did, you know, chopped and played with the timeline. Bit. Yeah, they, that's, a, that's the thing that he tried to differentiate it from the typical right. epic, right? Now, Aaron Sorkin, uh, who is a outstanding uh, writer, um, I will admit that West Wing is one of my favorite shows of all time, and but I really feel that long-form writing is more of a strength because he, he likes to play with these characters and give them arcs and stuff, mm-hmm. but I still think he had a very smart, witty um, script, these lines that only Sorkin can do, like, you know, when uh, Timberlake's uh, Sean Parker character is with that girl, and he goes, I'm an entrepreneur, what have you preneured lately? It's just the simplicity, but it's still sharp, witty dialogue. I think it's a really, really strong suit. Probably the strongest suit of the social network. Yeah, I'll agree. That and the score. I know it's not going to get much talk when you're talking about social network, but right. I really like the score. Not as much as other movies nominated, but that's for another time, right? I mean, Trent Reznor put a, yeah. I like how the score matched with the dialogue well and matched with the whole cinematography. So it all kind of came together for me. Right, right. It was the mix of the classical score with more of the electronic, you know, yeah. synthetic things. And I think uh, somebody who needs a lot of credit for making a film really about anti heroes or villains, a movie that Aries Worker has admitted that really, there should be argument after the fact that who is the good, who is bad, what are they doing good, what are they doing not, is David Fincher. Um, I think David Fincher does a good job in really editing a film and making these characters captivating. Because there's really not a lot of depth to the characters. I think in real life, you could say that too. Yeah. I think the writing and the directing tried to salvage really people who are very not worth our time, yeah. except for the fact that they started this website and craze that has now made them very rich. Yeah, like even 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 things like coding, like probably the most probably one of the most boring topics when you talk about computers. They made they kind of made it into a game, which um. Pretty sure it was one of the fictions, many, many fictions made from real life in the, right. in the movie. Yeah. So, now I gotta ask, is this movie representative of the generation, or is it just a movie about a girl? In the end, you know, I was just a okay, friend of friend, me, Eric Albright. I think yeah. that was kind of really a cop-out trying to link the, the incredible first yeah. scene with the last scene. So is it a movie that captures our generation, or is it a movie necessarily about figures that do not deserve our time except for what they did? Okay. I, first, I think the, the whole trying to link it to the girl thing, I agree that was kind of lame, because 
I never watching the movie. I never really thought of it as about the girl. I thought that would just like because um that was kind of like a fiction too that was later admitted that yeah Zuckerberg it, admit it, uh, it's been admitted that yeah there was no such instance or it, beyond the first yeah to a point this is a movie about a generation because it's about it's about building something new a new a new company that new companies that we haven't seen before right right and this is one of the few times you've seen this uh, as a movie right yeah. So I think that's why it'll be you know the generation like. Well, I think I mean, my only trouble is that you can't really announce something to be generationally shifting at the within, time. within two months of it, right? We need uh, to evaluate it. So that's my only complaint with these people who say this is the movie that only we should care about, and if you don't get it or if you don't like it, you don't get what's going on in the world today. So that's it. Mm-hmm. All right, so we're nearing the end of Inside the Academy Studio today, and like we do. Always, we like to have questions, and the first question will be your favorite moment in the social network. Favorite moment in the social network? Hmm. I think it has to be. I think it has to be the ending when, uh, when it, they kind of do admit that yeah, this is, this is kind of a, a character assassination in the entire movie of Mark Zuckerberg. Right. This is. It's like they implicitly miss, yeah, this is not the real if you don't want, if you want to know the real Mark Zuckerberg, it's not his movie. This is a movie that's just aimed at a, a neg- aimed at a negative portrayal of Mark Zuckerberg because of because it focuses on two lawsuits, right? Right. So obviously it's gonna be a negative portrayal of Mark Zuckerberg in the end. Okay. okay. Huh? My favorite moment was the the, the smackdown uh, laid by the Harvard uh, president on the Winklevoss <laughs> Trojans who came in to plead their case on how They've been cheated, and I think it was just an excellent piece of work. These were two characters that I really despised throughout the movie, and it was good to see them put in their place. Least favorite moment in the social network? I think mine would have to be on uh, the scene where Sean Parker wakes up with a girl. I mean, and then he doesn't know her name, but she doesn't know his name, but she criticizes for not knowing her name. I mean, maybe that's just a thing that kind of bothered me after watching it. And then it's linked by the Facebook page. Yeah, yeah so it was yeah. a little... Yeah, it was a little bit of far-fetched. Yeah, and I think I'm going to agree. Um, Parker, uh, really anything with Parker, particularly when he crashes their California house and they're all programming and stuff. Yeah. Uh, word association, tend off. When you think social network, what word comes to your mind? What? Uh, probably scarf. You know, the other one scene, one scene where she burns the scarf from Zabra. Yeah, burn the scarf. In? Yeah, like from the girl. Yeah. And I'll say business cards. I think the his pursuit of finally getting that business cards where it says I'm the boss, bitch. <laughs> uh, that's it. Uh, so that was today's episode of Inside the Academy Studio. Thank you.